Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, the, the issue of equality and education being a leveler, that is really, really important and it was very important to Mandela himself. He believed that education could help anybody change the world. So the issue of equality is very important. But when you talk about not closing the doors or the gates, by creating opportunities. I'm, I would like Professor Ruguja uh, to, to, to maybe speak a little bit about that because the, it's, the issue of access and equality is not fi only financial. Um, it is also the difference between formal and informal education. It's the difference between the academics that we know and lifelong learning. Um, Madiba, in, in case some of you haven't read, spent 27 years in prison and of those 27 years I think he spent about 20 doing a law degree. Sometimes he'd be stopped because the prison didn't want him to do it, I think for about four or five years, and then he would start again. So that level of flexibility that would al allow those who are underprivileged and those who are not financially uh, able to do it all in one go. I'd like you to speak to that a little bit and maybe tell us how, because it's very good to say these are the things that we need to do. The question is how. Are you saying in the framework of Madiba <laughs> or within the present context? N it, of, course, of course, the ideal would be in the framework of Madiba. But um, I think that, that given that we are dealing with the reality and we're talking about the role of higher education institutions and universities uh, in being able to meet this new need for access, uh, greater access, I think let's deal with the reality and see how we can then marry the three of them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming and for attending this important uh, session. But the first thing is uh, demography. Our population growth is 3.4%, the second largest, second growth in the world. And also, you know our economy. Unless we become very frugal and really avoid corruption, we cannot educate all of the students. We cannot bring people to high school, to universities now. I'm in a private university, but most of the students cannot meet their obligations because their parents cannot afford. When I joined the Makerere, it was University of East Africa, 1966. That's when I was the first year here. We were 14 students from East Africa doing mathematics. 14 from East Africa doing mathematics and physics. And I stayed in the Livingstone Hall here. It was like London. You see? Like London, because we are few. But also, the management of resources was there. Because Canon John Bikangaga was my teacher in the senior one. And the one who inculcated me to do mathematics. And when I came here, I got a first class in mathematics and physics. Because those people had the vision, had the goal. But now, with our population, is it possible to have scholarships for all? It is not possible. Even for people coming to Makerere, you must have three A's, isn't it? But in my time, people with the three C's came here and go to first class, upper second. I don't know what Professor Nwagaba got at, at, at A level. But this is, the, <laughs> this is the situation. Even average people, average students, were able to come. So now we have two competing factors, demography and our economy. But there is an intervening menace 
is integrity. Integrity has been talked about by the presenter, the professor. Integrity. In UNESCO, when you have a human being minus embarrassment, you get an animal. That is the equation of UNESCO. The human being minus embarrassment is equal to an animal. That's why he asked, do we have any, any humanism in here? You may be human, but if you don't have humanism, you are an animal. This is the situation we are in. It is very unfortunate, and as we celebrate today, is there a recovery route? Is there a way we can re-examine ourselves and re-imagine where we will be 50 years from now? If If we continue on this path, there must be a way of re-examining ourselves. We cannot continue like this and end up to any, any goal. This is my way. There is no quick answer to your question. It is a scenario we have to examine. We have to model, to model it, isn't it? The other thing is, there is a problem of self-preservation for the elites. Whoever gets something, he wants to keep it on its own, to preserve himself or herself. Greedy, isn't it? That is another aspect, bringing in this menace of corruption. I don't think, for instance, for me, I need much more now to live my remaining time in the world. I don't need much. But the that imaginary wealth you think you want to accumulate. I hope the young people can take a, can take a leaf from this lecture here that you should have this integrity, helping others, really sharing ideas. And you have your intellect. That is the key. Harness your potential. Get opportunities without really exploiting the others who are under your care. I thank you. Um, I'm going to go back. Thank you very much for those comments.